Hello everyone. This is again Zahida Khan from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, KIT College of Engineering, Kolhapur. In the last sessions, we have discussed the concept of cost as well as the classification of cost. In this session, we will be discussing the concept of cost center and cost unit. Let us go to the first concept, which is a cost center. What is exactly a cost center? So, a cost center is a department or a function within an organization which does not directly add to the profit but still it costs the organization money to operate. The best example of a cost center is the HR department or the IT department. We all are aware that HR department does not generate any profit neither does the IT department but we need the HR department as well as the IT department for our day to day operations. So, the company is paying money to the HR department as well as the IT department in the form of expenses in order to generate the revenue. A cost center is also defined as any location, person or item or equipment or we can also have a group of these for which we can directly find the cost and that can be used for the purpose of cost control. The main use of a cost center is to track the actual expenses for comparison to the budgeted expenses. A cost center indirectly contributes to a company's profit via operational excellence, customer service and enhanced product value. Particular object of a the cost center serves two main purposes. Firstly, it delineates the spheres of responsibility which means that the person or the manager who is in charge of a cost center can directly be assigned the responsibility for the cost control of that particular cost center. Secondly, the cost centers are meant to assemble at one recovery area because of which we can have a common base of recovery for that particular cost center. Let us discuss the types of cost centers. We have personal cost centers and impersonal cost centers. A personal cost center is the cost center wherein the costs are accrued with reference to a person or a group of persons. Impersonal cost center is wherein the costs are accrued with reference to a person, a equipment, a place or a machinery or a group of it. A manufacturing unit usually has a production cost center which is applicable to machine shops, weld shops, etc. We have a service cost center which is usually used for powerhouses, gas producing shops. Two other types of cost centers are operation cost centers and process cost centers. Operation cost centers consist of machines and or persons which are there for carrying out similar operations. A service cost center usually consists of machines and or persons which are engaged on a specific process or a continuous sequence of operations. Let us have a reflection spot at the end of the cost center concept. So what do you think are the advantages of having a cost center? Can we have a moment to think for this particular question? Let me answer it for you. A cost center is basically used for tracking the expenses. So when we have to find out or compare the actual costs versus the budgeted costs, we can take help of the cost center. So the main advantage of having a cost center is we can use it for cost control purpose. Let us go to the next concept which is cost unit. So, a cost unit is a device which is used for the purpose of breaking up or separating costs into smaller subdivisions which is attributable to products or services. So, it is nothing but the unit of quantity of a product or a service or a time or it can be a combination of these in relation to which we can find out the cost or the cost can be expressed. The forms of measurement used as cost units are usually the units of physical measurements like number, weight, area, volume, length, 
time and value. Let us have a look at some examples of cost unit. If we have an automobile industry, the cost unit basis that could be used is number of automobiles. If it is a cable industry, the cost unit basis used can be meters per kilometer. If the industry is a cement industry, we can have the basis for costing as tons of cement. If the industry is a chemical industry, the cost unit basis can be either liters, kgs or tons of chemicals. If the industry is a gas industry, we could have the cost unit basis as cubic meter of gas. If the industry is a power industry, we could have the cost unit basis as kilowatt hour of the power. If the industry is a steel industry, we can have the cost unit basis as tons. If the industry is a metal pleating industry, we can have the cost unit basis as square meters. Let us go to the next concept which is the concept of costing. So costing here refers to the techniques and processes of finding the cost, the methods which are used and the actual process of cost finding. The technique of costing basically involves two main steps. The first is collection and classification of expenditure according to the cost elements. We have seen the elements of cost as materials, labor and expenses. So the first step involves collecting the direct material cost, direct labor cost, direct expenses and also collecting the indirect material cost, indirect labor as well as indirect expenses. The second step in costing involves the allocation and apportionment of the expenditure to the cost centers or cost units. Your allocation and apportionment are two very important terms which means that the cost of a particular product or a particular entity could be directly allocated into the cost final cost of the product and apportionment means we need to divide the cost of that particular entity over the various products which have been manufactured on the shop floor. With this, let us see the desirable conditions for a costing system. The first is suitability to the business. So the costing system which is employed has to be tailor made, it has to be practical and it is usually devised according to the volume of industry, to the nature of industry, to the requirement as well as the size of the particular business. The second desirable condition is simplicity. The costing system should be very simple so that it can be easily used by anybody. The third important condition is flexibility. A costing system should be flexible enough in order to accommodate the changes with the changing environment. The fourth important condition is the costing system should be economical. A company need not invest more into the costing system which is adapted by the company. The next important condition is comparability. It can, it should be very easy to compare the cost using the particular costing system. If a company needs or intends to compare the cost of a particular product over time, this feature should be easily available into the costing system. The next desirable condition for a costing system is that the costing system should be capable of presenting information at the desired time. So whenever the company is in need of some older information or some past data, the costing system should be in a position to present that information. The next condition is it should have uniformity of forms, which means that there should be a uniform form structure or a uniform database structure for the costing system. The next condition is it should have minimum clerical work which means that the clerical work involved should be pretty lesser than the actual work into the costing system. The next desirable condition for the costing system is it should have a adequate wage procedure. So, the costing system should have a proper knowledge of what is the wages or what is the wage system for the different people working into your organization. 
and lastly the duties and responsibilities of the cost accountant should be well defined whatever the duties whatever the functions of the cost accountant may it be the time study part the motion study part the calculation or estimation of cost all the duties and responsibilities of the cost account till the cost control should be properly and well defined for the cost accountant